got to accentuate the positive e limb minute the negative and latch on to the affirmative don't mess with mr in between so the first lesson that we want to look at is the accentuate the positive song you'll see the objectives up there we're introducing them to lyric writing um, we're introducing them to Johnny Mercer. This booklet that you have is loaded, loaded, loaded with Johnny Mercer uh, material. Usually what I do is when I give these booklets to the students, I'll hand them out and in order for them to be doing something and not talking, I might say, okay, in the first four or five pages or so, um, see if you can figure out where Johnny Mercer is from. Not where he moved to, where is he from? So in those first four or five pages, as you guys are passing out the booklets, they're starting to learn the life a little bit of Johnny Mercer. As you guys familiar, familiarize yourselves with him, you can always introduce them to more facts about Johnny Mercer. In each lesson, they'll be learning more and more and more. The goal of this lesson is, gosh, songwriting. How do I, how do I teach songwriting? Or how does a student learn how to write a song? So usually what I, I try to do is empower them. So I'll say to them, um, who here has ever written a song before? And actually during this workshop, I'm going to ask you guys to channel some of your third through sixth grader minds, that inner child in you. And I'll be asking you sort of to, to do a call and repeat sometimes or asking you guys what you would imagine them saying. So actually in this room, raise your hand if you've ever written a song before. Nice, okay. So if you've never written a song before, totally fine. Raise your hand if you've ever written a paragraph. <laughs> a sentence, a word, ah, everybody, right? Okay, so for third graders or fourth graders or fifth graders, they might be like, ah, yeah. and then when you get them, have you ever written a word? They're like, okay, I've written a word, right? So what I try to say is if you have the ability to even write a word on a paper, and y'all do, you have the ability to write a song. I'm just going to hopefully make it a little bit easier for you. Um, and the goal of today's lesson is, gosh, if they're feeling nervous, if they're feeling overwhelmed, I don't know how to write a song, it's just to get something out on paper. So each, le each lesson is going to build from that. Today, the, le the goal is to get something out on paper. If they're able to use some of the literary devices we talk about, fantastic. If they're not and they write like four sentences, great, super. The goal is to really set them up with the, the, best, the most amount of success possible and to really break it down very easily. So. The, if you see on page 30, you'll ask them to guide them to page 30. They'll actually see sheet music for the song Accentuate the Positive in your booklets. What I like to do with every lesson is to actually play the full song for them so that they get to hear it. This sheet music, it starts with an introduction. A lot of the versions that I use don't have the introduction, so I'll guide them exactly where it starts on this sheet music. Um, we teach them about sort of, okay, if you look one, two, three, four, five, uh, six lines down, you put your finger on it, you move towards the inside of the page until you see those little words you've got to accent. You'll make sure that everyone's there. And that's usually where my music starts. You can really do any version of Accentuate the Positive you want. Um, for this purpose, I'll just play you a little snippet of the song that I use. Um, for the purpose of time, I won't play the whole thing. But I do, in the classroom, if time allows, actually allow them to hear and listen to the whole song. As they're listening, I'll say, I want you guys to think about what the message of this song is. What is Johnny Mercer really trying to say in his song? Okay, so I'll play you a little snippet of it. They're listening for the message. You've got to act, send, the and again, you can use any version you want. As this song is playing, I'll be writing the lyrics on the whiteboard. Again, if you have more time, great. If you want to take more time with it, fantastic. For me, I do these lessons when I go into schools in about 45 minute sessions. So I try to multitask and do everything I can um, to, be, to allow them to hear the music. So I'm going to point your direction over to the whiteboard now. 
Once the lyrics are up on the board, um, you'll notice that there's a lot of vocabulary in here that these students might not get. Okay? So first I might say, did anyone notice what the message of this song was? And some students might say something, but then I'll say, okay, let's look at just the title. Accentuate the positive. This word, a lot of students don't, don't know this word. It's a big, yummy word, right? So I usually describe accentuate to accent, to focus, to put a lot of focus on the positive. So what is this song saying? What's the message? Can someone tell me the message? Very good, to think positive. And Johnny Mercer uses loads of examples in this song of how you stay positive, right? So then I'll... I'll sort of introduce the literary device, the literary device of rhyme, okay? And I'll say, you guys are, are you guys rhyming experts? How many of you are, how many of you guys know how to rhyme? Raise your hand. Remember, we're channeling our inner child. Oh, all of you. Okay. Um, what rhymes with cat? Oh, okay, very good. What rhymes with mouse? And sometimes I'll throw out a long word and they'll be like, oh, I don't know. Okay, but you guys can make it your own. Then I'll say, okay, so you guys are rhyming experts. Let's look and see if we can find any of the rhyme in this song. So can someone give me an example of where you see rhyme in this song? Yeah. Accentuate, eliminate. Good. Very good. That's a tricky one that they don't always get, right? Because that's more of like internal rhyme inside the sentences. You've got to accentuate, eliminate the negative. And I'll even introduce, okay, if, you're have, if you have rhyme sort of internally, it's internal rhyme. Where else? Negative. Good. All of these endings. Negative, positive, affirmative, maximum, minimum, pandemonium. Where else is there rhyme? Between. Very good. Between and scene. A lot of times this will be one of the last ones they get to. So you can talk about how many songs don't have rhyme. He chose to rhyme at the ends of lines. He chose to rhyme at the ends of phrases. You can even rhyme inside the lines. And rhyme can sometimes, you can talk about what rhyme can do. It can help create a rhythm or a meter or a tempo. It's catchy. It's fun. Um, so now you've introduced rhyme. I actually want to go back and, and talk about the vocabulary for a moment. These are all, all star the words that they usually have a hard time with. Accentuate. Usually I'll read it and I'll say, raise your hand if we come to a word that you don't understand. And if I see blank stares and no one's raising their hand, I'll define it anyway. So you've got to accentuate to really focus on the positive. This is another one, sometimes depending on the grade level. Eliminate, to destroy, to get rid of. You want to get rid of the negative, focus on the positive, latch on, hold on to the affirmative. That's a biggie. Affirmative is like the good thing. You want to hold on to the good thing, to the positive thing. Don't mess with Mr. In-between. We've got to spread joy up to the maximum, the high point, bring gloom down to the minimum, the low point, have faith or pandemonium. Don't usually know what pandemonium is. I usually do this. Pandemonium is, ah, it's craziness. It's chaos, right? So have faith or craziness is going to walk into your life, is liable to walk upon the scene. So I really try to give them an understanding of the song. And I actually do that before I introduce rhyme. Sorry about that. So let's talk about another literary device. So here we have rhyme. Another one in this song that's used, and depending on the grade level, um, third graders, I, it depends on the level. I don't necessarily introduce personification. But personification is another literary device that's used. We have this personality of Mr. In-Between. Spreading joy, can you really like spread joy on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? No. Can you really bring gloom somewhere, walk hand in hand with gloom? No. And again, I'm sort of rushing through this, but this is a lot of, of um, sort of interaction with your students to really help them internalize and understand the concept of personification. It's when you take something non-human and you give it person-like qualities, personification, right? There's another literary device that Johnny Mercer doesn't use in this song, but one that I love to introduce, which is alliteration. Alliteration is when you repeat the same sound 
over and over and over in a sentence, right? So Johnny Mercer, when he was 15, he wrote a song, Sister Susie, Strut Your Stuff. So everyone say that. Sister Susie, Strut Your Stuff. Three times fast. Go. Faster, faster, faster. Ah, okay. First, yeah, pandemonium, right? Um, okay, so when we repeat the same sound over and over and over in a sentence. And to really help internalize this, I found what's sort of fun is to take a student's name. So can someone give me their name in here? Raise your hand, please. What's your name? Julie Warren. Julie. I love that. Julie. So Julie. I want to come up as a, as a class with four or five different words that start with the same sound as <coughs> Julie's name. So we need some j, j words. Joy, joy, joy. Oh, okay. So joy. I heard jump. What else? Juggles. Juggles. Jewels. Okay, that's good. So we have, we have some good examples. Now, how do we create a sentence using those words? And we can add little connector words in there. But can someone come up with a sentence? It doesn't have to be in the same order. We have Julie what? Jumps. Jumps. Julie jumps. 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 Good. And juggles? Jewels. Jewels with joy. <laughs> with joy. In the jungle. In the jungle. <laughs> OK. We could probably keep going. OK, good. So. I don't recommend juggling with jewels. However, Julie, go for it. So, everyone can reread this sentence together. Julie jumps and juggles jewels with joy. Wee! Okay? So maybe I'll say, everybody, let's juggle the jewels and repeat the song. Anyway, you know, any, any um, ways that you can get them more involved and, and interactive. But I find that this is a way that they get really excited and they're able to really internalize this idea of alliteration. Okay? So you've introduced some of the literary devices. If you look at this PowerPoint, you can use that really as your blueprint. Um, we then, we're circling the rhymes, we're including other um, uh, literary devices, and now we want to move on to the writing phase. So we're going to actually brainstorm in this lesson positive messages that we can give. That way it sets them up with ideas of what they want to write about. So. Let's just get a couple, for the sake of time, on the board. What are some positive messages or advice that we might give to, say, a friend, or a brother or sister, or a teacher or a stranger? What's some positive advice we could give? Yeah? Don't be sad. Don't be sad. Don't be sad. Maybe like you're trying to cheer someone up. And if they are sad, maybe they want to write about it, right? What, what's another one? Yeah. Be glad. Be glad. <laughs> Good lyrics. And sometimes they'll even say that. That was a great lyric, right? So that they're starting to think like, oh, I could do this. Um, yes? Uh, be nice. Be nice. <laughs> I heard another one over here. Do your best. Do your best. One that's actually pretty popular in schools that if they don't Bring it, bring it up, I like to sort of introduce it. What goes on at school campuses that, that we're all trying to fight because it can really hurt people's feelings? Bullying, right? Don't be a bully or bullying. Um, so I usually try to get a board full of ideas. And I'll say if there's something that you want to write about that wasn't on the board, great. It gives a positive message. Remember, we're, we're trying to write now a song inspired by Johnny Mercer's Accentuate the Positive. So you have some good ideas. The goal, and again, today it's just about getting something out on paper, is to write four lines. That's it. Four lines. Or think of it as four sentences. Four lines of like a poem, or your song, or a story. Um, most students will be able to get a heck of a lot more than four lines. But this is targeted for the students that are already feeling so overwhelmed. Okay? Depending on the grade level or in where they're at, you might want to challenge them and say, we talked about rhyme. We talked about alliteration. We talked about personification. Challenge yourself to use at least one literary device. Okay? So there are ways to make it more advanced. If they're older, you can even add two literary devices, or you can introduce different 
um, different tools and different formulas that they can, they can build in. Um, but the goal is to get four lines. Most of them will get more. And as they're writing, I might say, think of how you would sing it or think of how you would rap it. It doesn't have to go along with the accentuate the positive music. Okay? So they've written, their, they've written their lyrics, and I'll show you some examples of what's come up. When, um, when they're done, I try to leave about 10 minutes or so for sharing. Okay? So um, the, the, the biggest thing, sometimes students can get nervous especially with their peers, especially if they've written about things that are very personal to them. So it's, it, it's very important for me, and I think it's very impor important for the culture of these workshops, to set up a fair amount of safety. So I'll say sometimes, you guys, I don't have many rules, but one of my biggest rules is that we stay really respectful of each other. We're really trying not to be bullies, right? So we want to stay respectful, and there are students sometimes that will come up and are very nervous and will be really soft. And sometimes I'll say, if you can't hear them, that's okay. I'll make sure that we repeat it. But sometimes it's scary. Allow them to just get through it. And then I'll make sure that we help repeat it so that we can all hear it. Okay? Um, one thing I like to do when kids are sharing so that we know that they're listening is if I notice that a student has, has used a lot of rhyme, I'll say, okay, everyone put up their popcorn rhyming hands. And every time you hear a rhyme, your hand goes pop, pop, right? And sometimes we'll talk about what the main message is. Um, but that's a really fun way to get people um, engaged and, and supporting one another. But that's, that's a big deal, is, is the safety that's created in this classroom for them to really share, um, to share their lyrics. During the time that they're writing, that's a good opportunity for you to go around and help gauge and see where their levels are at. You can help them with the writing process. If they're stuck, maybe you even want to have them write about being stuck. Right? You can write about what's on your mind in this moment. If they're bored, they're like, I'm not into this, write about it. Tell me how much you hate it. Right? And use a rhyme in there if you can too. Right? So it's okay. You want to really go with where, with where they're at. Not everyone needs to like it, but this is a fun, creative way for them to express themselves while they're learning. Okay? The last piece of every single lesson is the copyright. We want to introduce them to uh, learn about intellectual property, that these are their words, nobody can steal these words from them. Just like an artist signs a painting, this is their way of signing their work, right? So that no one can steal their words from them. And if they do, people are plagiarizing and they're stealing and you could sue them, <laughs> hypothetically. Okay, so in order to copyright, at the top of their bot or the bottom of their lyrics, you would put a little C with a circle around it. Next to that, you would write their first and last name. After that, in one long line, you would write the year. And sometimes, for my purposes, because sometimes I'll have students recopy the lyrics to send back to the foundation, I'll have them put their age underneath it. That way, if I picked up this paper, I would know who wrote it, when you wrote it, how old you were when you wrote it. And this should be on every single piece of songwriting that they do, of every poem that they do, so that they can start to feel a real ownership over their work and their material. And again, that happens in every single lesson. Okay? So that's, that's the format of Accentuate the Positive. And what's sort of neat is that's the format for everything. You introduce a song. You talk about the literary devices. You brainstorm about what they're going to write about. You share, you copyright. It's the same thing every time. What goes in between there is up to you. Because you guys, I, I have no doubt that you guys have a lot of skills that I don't have that you can bring to your own work um, and make this a, as engaging for you as it is for the students. Okay.